Lord, praise the Lord, Pastor Michael Jakes, and welcome to the Bible Speaks Live. Once again, coming to you with a word, with a word that we pray will be helpful and beneficial to your heart and to your life tonight. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone has the answer for your life today. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through in your life, Jesus Christ is the answer for whatever ails you in your heart and life. We are coming to you uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we are coming to you streaming live on Facebook, and we are streaming live on YouTube and on Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. That's Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. And we want to thank you for being with us and joining us on this night. Uh, we know that this night, like any other night, is no different. We know that the devil is busy. Uh, the devil is busy at all times, and so we want to make sure uh, that we let the devil know that Jesus is victorious. Jesus is victorious. Uh, Jesus, uh, at the same time that Jesus has a plan for your life, sometimes the enemy is also lurking and he has many things to say. But we know that the Lord shall and will overcome. And you are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. We're going to open up in a word of prayer and we're going to go straight into uh, the powerful and mighty word of God tonight because we know that he is absolutely able. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you have the answer for whatever ails anyone today, Lord Jesus. We come to you because we know that you have the words of eternal life. So we pray that now you might take this word. And, Lord, I pray you might use this word to touch someone, someone who is listening, someone who is watching, whether they are watching live, whether they are watching on tape delay, whether they watch it, whether they download it. Father, I pray that you will touch someone's heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Once again, shout out to all of those who do listen Listen in on Spreaker.com from across the United States and even around the world who take time to listen in live and download. Uh, I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Once again, you will help us out greatly by going over to our YouTube channel and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Once again, uh, that will let us know that you're there. And I pray that also you'll be blessed by the things that you will find there. And anytime we have anything new to upload, which is quite often, you will be the first to know. Amen. Amen. So we want to bless the Lord. I want to take you to, I want to take you right into the Bible, and take you to, uh, I want to take you right into uh, the book of First uh, Corinthians, chapter number six. First Corinthians, chapter number six, starting in verse number nine. First Corinthians, chapter six, starting in verse number nine. Amen. First Corinthians, chapter six, starting in verse number nine. And it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of God the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. And I just want to talk to you tonight for a few minutes, just on one word, one word. And that's all, all we need is, is, is one word that explains it all, one word that tells it all, and one word will completely tell you exactly what it is about this life in Christ that makes it so unique. And that one word is clean. 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 Are you clean tonight? Are you clean tonight? Have you been washed? Have you been set free by the power of the Holy Spirit? As we said, as we just read here in verse number 11, and such were some of you, such were some of you, but ye are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. And that is in high order to be washed, to be sanctified, to be justified. You are in high company. And so we need to bless the Lord and thank God that we are His, that we belong to Him, that we can say that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. We are clean. We stand clean before the Lord. And it's the enemy that comes and tries to wreck it for us and try to tell us that we are no good, uh, that we are not who we say we are, that we are not who Christ says we are. We know that the devil is a liar. So tonight we need to speak the truth and call the devil a liar that we are clean. We stand in his presence clean. This does not mean that we stand in his presence sinless. This does not mean that we stand in his presence spotless. 
We know that we have a lot of things going on. We understand that sin is, is prevalent in this world, and sometimes sin tends to uh, attach to us, like Velcro. But we know that we have a Savior. We know that we have a God that we can go to. We know that we can go boldly, as the Bible says, boldly to the throne of grace to receive uh, help in that time of need. So even though the enemy might rush in and come in like a flood, even though the enemy will lie and he will bring condemnation into your life, you need to secure yourself and be assured of the fact that in the sight of God, through the eyes of Jesus, you are clean. We are, we are the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God in him. Once again, that does not mean uh, that you stand sinless. And this great truth, the fact that we are clean and we stand clean in the Lord, is what the enemy wants to keep from the rest of the world. He wants to keep this vital truth away from those who do not know the Lord. Here's what it says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 4 and in verse number 3. This is why we have to keep preaching the gospel. This is why we must not get caught up in politics. This is why we must not get caught up in all of the social mores of the world, uh, of, of this life. We cannot get caught up in all of these different things that are going on and try to distract and take our attention away from the main point of why we are in Christ. And that is the gospel. He says here in verse number 3 of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, But if our gospel be hid, if our gospel be hid, if we are living a hidden gospel, if we are living a lifestyle where our Christianity is hidden, it does the world no good. That doesn't mean that you have to go out with signs and banners. That doesn't mean you have to run up and down the street saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, that doesn't mean all of that necessarily. But you cannot hide the fact that you are in Christ. Too many times we as Christians, we tend to blend in with the rest of the world. Blend in and be like the world and do what the world does. The Bible says that we should come out from among them and be separate. Separate. Remember, we are washed, number one. Two, we are sanctified. That means we are separated. There should be something different about you if you are in Christ. Something different. They got to be a different walk. They got to be a different way. They got to be a different style. They got to be a different... You, you do things different when you are in Christ because His Spirit is present in you. And you are going... If you are living in Christ properly, you are going to... You are not going to be a hit in the world. You are not going to be popular with the rest of the crowd. If you live this life as Jesus lived his. Jesus was loved for a little while, but when they began to see what he was really about, people dropped off him like a hot potato. They walked away. When he said certain things, they said, this is a hard saying. We don't know if we can deal with this. And they walked away. They walked away from the Savior of the world. Because they couldn't deal with the truth that he was saying. They couldn't, they couldn't, it, 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 it didn't ring true. It didn't ring a bell to them. You see, I was praying with someone only recently. And this is, how, this is how it goes. This is how deep this thing is that we have to, and I'll get back to the scripture in a moment, that we cannot keep our gospel hid. I was praying with somebody just recently. And and I, as, as I prayed, you know, I could, I could sense, I could sense the, 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 the power of God, the, the presence of God. Not in myself, of course, but I could sense the Spirit of God that he wanted to do some work in this individual. And as I prayed, when my prayer was finished, when the prayer was done, the individual approached me and the individual said, as I was praying, as I was praying, she said, the person said that there was something telling her that I was lying. Something was telling her that I was lying. Now that is none other than Satan himself. Evil spirits, whoever you want to say, the enemy, the enemy is out to distract. He's out to lie and tell the world that this message of Christ is not true. And as the power of God began to be spread through that little room, and we were in, as that prayer was going out, and she said that, she spoke the truth. She spoke the truth in that that is what she sensed. Something was telling her that this prayer, the words, the power, that it wasn't true. It wasn't true. 
I'm here to tell you today that it's true. Jesus Christ can deliver you from whatever it is that has you bound. Jesus Christ can deliver you from whatever has you enslaved. Whatever it is in your life that you cannot seem to overcome if you are overwhelmed. Jesus Christ has the power to break that thing and cause you to live and walk in him. As I spoke to this individual, I told him that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ can do for him what no one else can do. And this is what I said. Jesus Christ can do for him, for, for them, what no one else could do. We must continue to speak this word. We must continue to speak it in faith. We must continue to trust in God. Here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Those who are, who are without Christ. In whom the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? None other than Satan. The God of this world hath blinded the minds. Blinded the minds of them which believe not. He has blinded their minds. He has caused their minds to be in such a way that they overlook, are distracted, unable to see. There is a veil that stops them from understanding the truth. And even when they hear the truth, it does not sound like the truth because they are so ground in their own way. Something told me that you were lying. It's not a lie. And he keeps them blind. The enemy keeps them blind lest the light or so that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ and Satan himself knows. The evil spirits know. The demons know that this light of Christ is glorious. Not that they have experienced it because they're not saved and they never can be, but they have seen what this power can do to human beings. They have seen what this power, how this power generated in a person that is committed to them, to him, can do. They know that this power of Christ will snatch away that person from their kingdom. And so they, stri they try, they strive to blind the minds of those who are lost and do not believe. They want to keep them in that state of unbelief. Who is the image of God should shine upon them. They don't want the light of the gospel. The glorious light of the gospel to shine on those that don't believe. And anything they can bring up. Anything they can pull out. And as the days get shorter, spiritually speaking... They are pulling out all stops because they know, they know as a whole, they know that their time is short. They don't know when Jesus is coming, just like we don't know when Jesus is coming. But they know time is short. Time is short. And so they work and they work hard to discourage the child of God. But you must know today who you are in Christ. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. You are clean. You are clean. You stand clean before the Lord. And as we come upon, as we come upon uh, the Lent season, in, in Catholicism, this is Lent season. As a matter of fact, today, Tuesday, today is what they call, today is what they call Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras, which is French for Fat Tuesday. And, and they are out in different parts of the world, especially down in New Orleans, and they are celebrating. They are celebrating. And, and they are celebrating. Why do they celebrate? Why do they celebrate on Mardi Gras Tuesday? Why, why, why do they celebrate? Because <laughs> traditionally they are trying to get in all the good time. They are trying to get in all of the, the sin and debauchery that they can before Ash Wednesday, which is tomorrow. They're trying to get all their sinning in for tomorrow because tomorrow marks the time when those who observe it will, will say, I'm going to give up some things. I'm going to give up some things now. I've had my fun. I've debauched myself. And now I'm going to relax and I'm going to give up partying for six weeks. 
40 days, 47 days if you count the Sundays. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give up smoking. I'm going to give up drinking. I'm going to give up going to parties. I'm going to give up cursing. I'm going to give up lying. I'm going to give up something. Something that I know is not right and is not good. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. Now, all of this, all of this is done by unsaved people. Unsaved people. There are some in the Protestant community who observe Lent. I don't know why. I mean, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, but they observe it. Some who are Presbyterian, some who are Lutheran, some who are Methodists, some Anglicans, they all observe it. But it is traditionally something that is Catholic. And they're going to they're going to have six weeks of self discipline. Self discipline. Six weeks. After that, gloves are back off and we can be our old self again. See, this is not how the Lord wants us to live. You see how the world, you see you see the blindness, you see the lostness of people, how they will do and behave in that way, thinking that by, they believe that by, by not doing certain things, by sacrificing certain things, that it's going to give God some pleasure, that it's going to cause God to turn around and bless them. Look, Lord, what I gave up. Look, God, what I haven't done for six weeks, and now you're going to bless me? No. No. You cannot earn God's grace. You do not earn God's favor. His favor, His grace is a gift. It is a gift. You cannot earn it. This is what it says in, in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And verse number 17. Romans 5. Verse number 17, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Gift of righteousness. Grace, righteousness are gifts. You can't earn it. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is the goodness of God shed forth to undeserving men. Grace is what you get from God that you don't deserve. That's what it's all about. That's what our salvation is all about. We are clean because of grace. We don't deserve to be clean, but we are clean in His sight through Christ because we are in Him. We are clean. Clean washed, sanctified, justified. That's who I am. That's who you are. And you cannot allow the devil to talk you out of it. You can't allow the devil to talk you out of it. And listen, when the enemy comes in and he's going to try to talk you into some things, he's going to try to talk you into to doing some things. He's going to try to talk you into, he, he's going to try to rationalize and say things like no one will know. He's going to say things like um, everyone else is, is doing it. Uh, join the fun. Join the crowd. You're missing so much. Those are the kind of lies that the enemy is going to reach out and try and tell you. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He speaks lies because it's what he knows. It's all he knows. He knows how to lie. And lie is what he will do. And lie is what he will continue to do to do up into the end. Don't be blinded. Don't be blinded by the enemy. Don't allow him to speak to you. Listen, don't try and have a running conversation with the devil. Do not attempt to have a running conversation with the devil. It won't work. It will never happen. You will find, you will find that you will lose that battle. You will lose that battle. He ran circles around Eve, and he will run circles around you if you decide to have a one-on-one -on -one with the enemy. You can't have a one-on-one -on -one with the enemy. He is much more sly than you might think. This is what the Bible says. So he's crafty, and he will come against you with all he has. He will come to you 
with all of his smoothness. He will come against you in whatever way he can, but he will do his best. He will do his best to stop you, to stop you and prevent you from walking with Christ in the way that you ought to. He will do all he can. He will do all he can. So you are clean. You are clean. You stand clean before the Lord, and there is nothing, there is nothing that the enemy can do. There is nothing that the enemy can say uh, about it. Let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. We're here in 2 Corinthians. Let's go to chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And starting in verse number 14. S chapter 6. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Starting in verse number 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has uh, righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? People during this time of the year, during this Mardi Gras time of the year, they try to associate light with darkness. They're trying to put them together. Let's do this so we can get this. I know this is wrong, and I'm going to give it up for a short, a short amount of time, trying to get some kind of benefit from it. It's not going to benefit you anything. The only thing that's going to benefit you is if you give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. This is what is well-pleasing to the Lord. That is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to give our hearts. He wants us to give our lives to Him. That's what is necessary. We cannot be unequally yoked. Unequally yoked together with un believers. It is something that we are warned against. We cannot we cannot sit at the table of devils and sit at the table of the Lord. It cannot work. It cannot work. If we try and do it, we will see the mess that we will make of our lives. So we need to keep our hearts and our minds and our eyes stayed fixed on Jesus. You see, because I am clean, because I stand in his sight clean, there are many benefits. There are many benefits of my being washed. Folk are going to try to tell you that it's not that important. David was afraid. David, in the Old Testament, David said, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He was, he was concerned that the Lord would take his spirit away from him. And this is not what he wanted. He wanted to make sure that his relationship with the Lord remained intact. Even after, after he had come clean with the Lord. He had to come clean. And there needs to be, as it was in the life of David at this particular time, there needs to be personal revival. Personal revival. And we can talk about revival in all sorts of different ways. Revival. Revival. But there can be no revival without repentance. There can be no real revival without repentance. Revival is not about jumping and shouting and dancing and spinning and running and everything. That, 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 we think that that's revival when we get involved in all of that. That may be a part of it. You know, praise, praise will wind up being a part of of uh, revival. But in the end, revival is not for those who are unsaved. Revival is for the saint. Revival is for those in the church. We need revival. The world needs repentance. It's not to say that the child of God does not need repentance also. But we need revival. We need revival. We need that which has been found wanting and that which is dead to be brought back to life. Quicken me. I believe it's in Psalm 85 and 6 that the psalmist, the psalmist says, won't you, uh, Lord, revive us so that we can praise your name. Revive us. Put life back in us. That's what we need. We need life brought back into us. And that life comes from the Lord. Revival doesn't come when man says, okay, now we're going to have a revival. Revival doesn't come when man says, okay, we're going to have a, a 10 day or a 20 or a 30 or a 40 or a 50 day. We're going to have a revival. It, it, it's a good thought. I understand the whole 
I understand what's behind it. I understand the I understand the semantics of it of using the word revival. If you're gonna have a uh, five days of a service, uh, seven days of a service uh, of services in a church, I understand the semantics of calling it a revival. It's called revival, and I guess it's it's spoken that way because that's the hope. But it's become now the word revival has come a a a, a, a byword, and it's used loosely. And people don't even really understand what revival means. Revival is not a set of meetings that last a week or 10 days or 20 or 21 days. That doesn't mean that that's revival. Those are services that are happening in the church. Now, if revival happens, bless the Lord on my soul. But real revival is going to bring change. Real revival is going to change the church. Real revival is going to change the saints. Real revival is going to bring repentance and the real revival is going to cause the saint of God, the child of God, to live and respond differently. That's what's going to happen when real revival happens. I'm going to respond differently to the Lord. I'm going to respond absolutely differently to the Lord when I am revived. You see, along with revival, along with revival, there has to be repentance and there has to be some brokenness. Brokenness. See, you and I, we, 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 we have not experienced brokenness. Brokenness is when I see my sin and it shatters me. Have you been shattered by your own sinfulness? Has your own sinfulness hurt you? This is what happened to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. His sin put him down. Oh God, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm unclean. Ah, but it was the Lord. Let's go there real quick. Let's go to Isaiah uh, chapter uh, number six. The first few, the first few verses of Isaiah chapter six, when the psalmist is crying out, when he finds himself in the presence, in the presence of God. And he says in verse number five, then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Why did he find himself in that state of uncleanness? Why did he find himself in that place where he said he was undone? It was the result of being in the presence of God. You see, we, we, we think, we think, that being in the presence of God simply means that God is here and we're going to shout and we're going to praise his name. Okay, that's good. We should. The Bible doesn't say anything that it's wrong to praise the Lord. The Bible says that when we, when we are in his presence, there should be shouts of joy. So there's no contradiction. There's no contradiction. But the child of God needs to be discerning and know when the Lord is looking for praise and when he's looking for for repentance. Sometimes we need to repent. Repent. And there can be no revival until there's repentance. And when revival comes, there will be washing going on. There will be cleaning going on. He will cleanse our hearts. He will cleanse our minds. He will cleanse us. And we will say, we will say, like David said, that my sin and my sin alone has brought me to this place. That's what needs to happen. We need to be cleansed from our sin. Here's what happened in Isaiah chapter 6, verse number, verse number 6. Then flew one of the seraphims into, unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my, thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged or cleansed. That's what God can do. That's what God will do when repentance comes and when revival, real revival comes. You're going to be changed. You're going to be different. On Sunday morning, we spoke about revival a little bit, and we spoke about the revival that happened in, uh, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. When the people saw the power of God. 
when they saw what the power of God could do, when they, when they saw what the name of Jesus could do, here's what happened. The Bible says that many that believed, the believers came and showed their things that they had been doing. They confessed and they came clean. They confessed and they showed the things that they had been doing, I guess undercover, who's to say? But there were things that they had not yet let go. You see, when we get saved, when we get saved, the change is instantaneous, and at the same time, at the same time, it's progressive. Instantaneous and progressive. He immediately comes into your heart. He immediately comes and makes you a new creature. You immediately come brand new, and he gives you a new set of thoughts and a new set of eyes and a new set of a new heart, a new spirit. Everything is new, but. Certain things leave you in a split second. You have no need, you have no desire, you have no want, it's gone. But there are certain things, clinging vines of sin, there are certain things that, that still try to hold on to you. Certain things from the old life that still try to creep up in back into your life. Doesn't mean that you're unsaved. Doesn't mean that what it didn't mean it doesn't mean that God didn't do a complete work in you. It's just that the enemy, the enemy comes in, he rushes in, he rushes in when you get saved. Listen, now, now the fight is going to start. Before you got saved, you didn't have any problem with the devil. I know you thought you did. You thought you had a problem with the devil before you got saved. But you didn't have a problem. You were on his side. You were doing what he wanted you to do. You were being how he wanted you to be. He didn't have any problem with you. But as soon as you become a Christian, you don't belong to him anymore. And he does not appreciate that. Now, he's coming. Now he's coming. And so when you get saved, the Lord changes your heart, changes your life. And you don't want to be, you don't want to do the things you used to do. But after a little while, the enemy comes in. He tries to come in. He tries to make different approaches at you. He'll come in this way. He'll come in that way. He'll come in. He'll lie. He'll, he'll do different things to try to get you to come back. To fall back into what you used to be. To fall back into how you used to do. And he will do this progressively. But you have to understand your position. Your position is, and I'll repeat it again, you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified. That's who you are. You're not any of those things anymore. And as we close, as we bring this to a close tonight, let me bring you back. I'm going to bring you back because it's so powerful. I'm going to bring you back to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 6. And we're going to read this again. So you get it in your heart, and you get it, uh, you get, get it in your heart, and get it in your mind exactly, exactly who you are in Christ. It says, "But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified." justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. I tell you, when you hear those words, that should make you shout. That should make you shout. Knowing your position in Christ. And the devil can't change it. He can't take it away from you. There's nothing that the devil can do about it. There is nothing. You are in his hands and no one, including him, can snatch you out. You are in the Lord's hands. Stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. You are clean in the Lord. Washed, sanctified, justified. That's who you are. That's who you are. You are clean clean. Well, on tonight, if you if you find yourself in that place tonight uh, where you are not, you don't sense that you are 
clean. If you're a child of God, if you're a child of God and you don't sense that you are clean, it's simply because the enemy uh, has been bringing condemnation in your life. And he's trying to tell you that you are not worthy. Now, of course, there is a sense that we are not worthy. But when the enemy tries to tell you that you're not born again, when you know you are, that's something different. We need to make sure that we know exactly who we are in the Lord. Because if we don't, once again, as we said before, the enemy is going to run circles around you. He is going to run circles around you, and, he, and you're not going to know who you are, and you're not going to know where you stand. He's going to bring he, he's going to bring in such doubt into your heart and to your mind that your faith will be sopped away. And this whole thing, this whole life, it is a walk of faith. If that gets shattered, you have nothing. If your faith gets shattered, you have nothing. Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. That's what the enemy wants to break down. The enemy wants to break down your faith. He wants to do all he can to break down your faith. If he can do it, he will do it. Break down your faith in any way that he can. Any way that he can. Don't allow the devil to have his way. Do not allow him to speak into your heart and do not allow him to speak into your thoughts. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Rebuke him. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you might touch, touch those under the sound of your word today, Lord Jesus. Lord, many, many who have heard, Lord Jesus, have finding themselves in a difficult way, Lord Jesus. We know that the enemy is trying to come in like a flood to their hearts and their lives, trying to run circles around them, trying to bring uh, distraction, trying to bring discouragement into their life. But Lord, we pray that they will be able to stand uh, knowing you, Lord Jesus. I pray that they'll be able to stand knowing that in you, in you, they are clean. They are clean. Yes, we know that sin uh, sin does come. But the Bible says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So we thank you for your gift of grace. We thank you for your gift of forgiveness. We thank you for your gift of repentance. We thank you for the gift of confession. We thank you for the gift of sanctification. We thank you for the gift of justification. Lord, we thank you for all of these things. Your mercy, Lord Jesus. We thank you because you have given them to us when you did not have to, Lord Jesus. So we bless your name and say, Lord, we thank you for making us clean. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Bless those under the sound of your word tonight, Lord Jesus. If anyone who is listening and watching, Lord Jesus, does not know you, Lord, I pray that they will come to you, the fountain of living water, Lord, where they can be also made clean. It takes a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Cleanse me. Wash me of my sins. Lord, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. And Lord, I pray that you will give me the grace and the strength to live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Lord, bless us all right now. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to be able to come uh, before you. Uh, we apologize for any we apologize for any technical difficulties that may have been seen or heard or that you may or have experienced uh, on tonight. We know once again uh, that the enemy, he, he, he's, he's trying real hard. But God is victorious. And Jesus has already won the victory. So we want to bless his name. We want to thank him uh, for allowing us this opportunity. Please go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel there. Anytime that we upload anything new, you will be the first to see, uh, to, to receive it. Uh, also, go over to my blog at that's the word org if you like to read and find out what I really think. <laughs> and also... Uh, if you uh, also go to Spreaker, uh, you will find uh, several other uh, podcasts that we produce, uh, whether it be Bible study, whether it be devotion, whether it be sermons, uh, Bible classes. Uh, we have all of those things there at Spreaker.com. Amen. So we want to bless the Lord. Thank you for joining us tonight. And don't forget tomorrow night, be right back here with the Cutting It Right Wednesday night Bible study, another riveting Bible study for your consumption. We pray that the Lord will bless you as you continue on this night. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. That's me. That's you. Have a good night. May God bless you.